Hi guys and welcome back to UK Fly Fisher. Today I have another fly tying demonstration for you and I think it's one you're going to enjoy. I've been getting requests for this for years now and I've just never got around to tying it. It's a really good pattern, it catches hundreds and hundreds of fish and if you haven't heard of it or seen someone fishing with it before, I don't know where you've been because it simply catches fish. And that is the Incredible Cat. It's a variation on the cat's whisker that I came up with after watching Davy McPhail's Muddler Hulk fly. When I saw Davy's video, I thought that's a great body. How can I implement that into a fly that's gonna catch me a lot of fish? And I thought, white and chartreuse go really well together. I'm just gonna create a cat's pattern with this. So I had to fiddle around and created a few patterns. And over time, we've come down to this one variation and it simply catches fish. There isn't a better cat's whisker pattern out there. Anyone that tells you there is hasn't tried this version. We've tried between 50 and 100 versions ourselves of all different cats with black wings, olive wings, white wings, changing the flash in them. Everything you can think of, we've probably tried it and nothing even comes close to the incredible cat. The main difference between this fly and normal cats is that we're swapping the Chanel for an edge bright material. Now it comes in a big square like this and it can be confusing to anglers just how we get the body. So I'm gonna show you how I prepare mine in a little demonstration before I get started on the main fly. So the first option we have when tying this edge bright material is to use a guillotine. This is the one I use, it's the quickest method. So if I take this out of the pack and just show you how we do it. So you get a big square like this that's folded in half, but with the guillotine, we're just gonna cut through two pieces at a time. You just wanna leave about seven mil, seven or eight mil hanging over the overlap. And then we just chop. As you can see, it cuts through nicely and we're left with the desired material we need. And it's nice and quick. The other way to do it would be with a pair of kitchen scissors. Come seven or eight mil, one cut, two cut, and you're done. Again, another nice strip ready to use for the incredible cut. The last way you can do this is with a Stanley knife. Now, if you're doing it with a Stanley knife, you're gonna want a metal ruler or a hard sided object. Lay it flat, Stanley knife out, cut down, and again, you've got the material required to cut your incredible cap. Then all you want to do is grab your scissors, come in and make cuts about three quarters of the way down the material and then about two or three millimeters apart, depending on the effect you're going for. As you can see, this would be the time consuming bit. The rest of the fly is pretty easy. So we're just going to do that the full length of the material. Let's get to the vise and show you how I tie the incredible cap. So once the material is ready, it's time to get the hooking device, which again is the short shank special from Elite Flies. And we're gonna be using a 140 UTC fluorescent fire tying silk. This one's running out, but we've got enough here to tie a couple more flies. We're just gonna come in and put a layer of tying thread all the way down the fly. Snip away that waste piece. And then we're gonna tie all the way back up stopping about five mil back from the eye of the hook. For the eyes on the fly, we're gonna be using fluorescent chartreuse beads. This one's from Flybox. We're just gonna secure these in nice and tight. Doing a figure eight on them, and then a couple of loops on the separate eyes, back to a figure eight. Just gonna make sure they're sitting right. It's important to get the eyes right. Like I said before, you don't want to be using glue because if you catch one on a rock or a tree or even your boat, the one will snap off. So we leave them secured. Nice. Look, they're not going anywhere, guys. You can actually just rock it back and forth. They're not going to move. You don't need glue and it'll save your fly in the long run not using it. Now for the tail of this fly, we're going to be using white marabou. So I'm just going to remove all the waste pieces from down the bottom. We're not going to need any of them like so, and then you've got all your usable fibers. So I take the shortest side as the tail, and then the longest side's gonna be the wing. And for both of these, we want about an inch and a half worth of fibers, like so, stand them up, put them away from the stem, and then group them together between your finger and thumb, and just swap until you've got a nice hold on them, like so. That looks perfect for the tail. And then I'm gonna come in and cut away all this mess at the front. Get rid of any loose fluff. 
And if there's a few bits standing up at this point, just come again because you want it nice and neat around the head of the fly. And then I'm going to pinch and loop one, two pinches and loops. And then we're just going to hold the tail as we tie backwards. Trying to keep them turns as close as possible. Go under the tail and then come back forwards like so. Now if your tail is a little bit too long, mine looks okay, but there are a few that are just exceeding that slight length that I'm looking for. I'm just going to come in and pinch it with a finger and thumb. Never cut marabou because you'll lose its natural taper. And that looks perfect. Now the body material we got ready earlier, all we're going to do is we're going to come in and snip a diagonal from the bottom two parts in. So we've got a little tying tag there. I'm going to put that on the side of the fly and catch it in. Like so. And now we're going to go the full way up with our tying silk. And back down just to make sure all the white is covered. Now people have suggested a lot of things for this body and most of them we've actually tried. I don't tend to just tie one fly, I'll tie a lot of variations and see which one works best and then that's the one we tend to stick at. Now with this one we've tried the holographic uh, orange, the holographic chartreuse, the um, pearl. We've tried a lot of different variations from this and they're all good suggestions but none of them work as well as just using that UTC fluorescent fire orange. If you don't believe us and you think you've got a better version, tie this one and then tell me if you think your version is still better because I can assure you this one catches a lot of fish. And all we do then is we take this in turns up the entire length of the body like so. And then when we get to this point, we're gonna bring our tongue silk up between one of the crevices Pull down tight on the other side and take a few turns behind, two turns in front, another turn behind, and then we're just going to come in with our scissors and snip away the excess piece. Like so. As you can see, it's coming together lovely there. The orange really pops, especially when it gets wet. Now, where you can pick up a few variations is on the black one. We found it doesn't matter so much on a black one, the body. So we've done well with the chartreuse holographic, black holographic, even the UTC fire orange like so. But on the white one, it's best to keep it this way because it's going to catch you more fish and especially them big fish. All the big fish we've tried have always come to the fluorescent fire orange. So it's what we stick to. Now for the wing, again, we're just taking it from the other side and we're going to go for about an inch and a half again worth of material. Tidy up that tying point and then pinch and loop. One, two, and then what we do is we figure eight again the eyes because this would tie down any loose bits at the front, like so. See how that wing's sitting? And then we're just going to pinch it in line with that tail, like so. How's that looking your side? Yep, that's perfect. And now there's one little final touch we do. Now the next part of the fly might not even add anything to it but it does make it look great and finishes off the fly well so i've always done it and that is the glister sparkle dubbing in pearl this is from venyards and all we're going to do is take a generous pinch of the material dub it on loosely this isn't to make like a really neat finish we, we want quite quite a rough rough finish just around the eyes so just going to figure eight that dubbing in there when you're happy with how everything's sitting, I've got a little bit there I'm just going to pull away. And one long fibre there, that's going to come out. And we're finished. Like so. Now if you want to neaten up the head and a quick trick to secure this fly to last even longer, we're going to grab a lighter and we can gently singe the front fibres. Like so. And because it's a plastic that's used in this um, glister sparkle dubbing, it melts them uh, fibres onto that tang silk. It's not going anywhere. Not that the fish's teeth can really get to it anyway, but it makes a really secure fly and a great pattern for catching those big winter trout. As always, a massive thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.